Is it a sin to move in with your boyfriend or girlfriend or even fiance if you sleep in separate bedrooms just to save money? Well, we're going to address this and a lot more. Uh, you know, is it gray area or is it a sin? There's a lot of questions that Christians have and we will dive in and discuss, guys, in just a second. First, if you could, if YT lets you try and hit that like button for me. Very important. Also, please share the video. Help us get around those algorithms. Hit the bell, subscribe, wear the glasses because I'm blind. And guys, if you enjoy my work here and you were able to help contribute to my ministry with the generous donation, a couple of different ways you could do that. One, simply click the super thanks down below on this video here. That's where you can just make a one-time donation. Or you can join my Patreon family, guys, for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash conservative truth. I set a goal for the month of April trying to get five new patrons. We have three so far looking for two more and also trying to rebound from the month of March where we unfortunately missed our goal. With Patreon, guys, you get the alerts for all my videos. Very important. You are not going to get all the alerts with just the YT notification. So if you are not already a part of my Patreon family, you're missing a ton of my videos and I don't want that to happen for you. So get on over to my Patreon today where you can also leave all your comments on the videos completely censorship free. You can send me direct messages. And as a bonus, a lot of people wanted me to do this and said, hey, can you do a video talking about your story? How did you go blind? How do you operate your entire video ministry without being able to see? Well, I answer all those questions in depth in the video that I did in the description. It's getting a lot of good reaction. Check it out when you get a chance. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So, you know, I came across an interesting Q&A that a church did recently where they were talking about gray areas versus actual sin. And I thought it was interesting enough to bring up here. And, you know, I don't know how many people are going to, you know, view this video. But for anybody who does, I welcome your thoughts and opinions on this. And, you know, feel free to share this video with others uh, who you think might want to get in on the discussion as well. The one that I, I'm going to touch on a few different topics, but the one I'm going to really focus in on here is this one. Is it a sin to move in with your significant other, whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, or fiance, uh, basically, you know, anything before you're married, but is it a sin to do that if you're going to sleep in separate bedrooms and the reason that you're doing it is to save money? Now, if you take a look at that question on the surface, okay, is it a sin to live with, you know, a significant other before you're married, for whatever the reason, in this case, to save money? You're not going to find a scripture in the Bible that's going to say specifically for that right there being an actual sin. The problem with this is that a little something comes into this called temptation, okay? Now, a couple can say, oh, we're not going to do anything. There's not going to be any funny business going on. No, we're just saving money. We got our own rooms. The bottom line here is that if you are emotionally involved with somebody, if you love somebody and you're going to be living under the same roof and you can say, oh yeah, we're going to stay in separate bedrooms. The chances, I'm not saying that nobody could do it, but the chances of you actually sticking to that commitment prior to you getting married before the business starts is slim. Okay. Plus again, you're also putting yourself into temptation, the bottom line. Now, there could be some other extenuating circumstances. Maybe you're moving, maybe you're going into another state, whatever. And you know, it's however much time before your wedding and maybe it's a couple of weeks before. But even regardless of that, you know, I know some pastors that will say outright, I've heard them say, I will not marry a couple. And, and I don't care what the circumstances are, but you know, I will not marry them unless they don't start living together until the day they get married and take those vows. And, and that's the way that they feel. So I personally, if you're asking me, I wouldn't put yourself in that position to even do this prior to marriage, because yes, you will fall into temptation. And here's the problem is that many Christians today, especially in this age of apostasy, where we see so much more affirmation of sin, a lot of Christians are trying to make every single area a gray area. Not every area is a gray area. You can't take a look at everything that is sin as, oh, well, it's a gray area. Here's another example. Drinking alcohol. You know, is it a sin to drink? No, but the Bible is clear when it says not to become drunk off of wine. Is it a sin to, you know, 
smoke the green, if you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but what does it lead to? See, all of these are doors that you open that could lead to things like addiction, among many other things and problems, right? Especially if you're somebody who was an alcoholic at one point in your life and, you know, you're tempted to take a drink. Oh, well, I'm saved. Jesus loves me and all that. I could take another drink, but then you know what it does to you. You could easily spiral back into what you once came from. So I, I think there's an excuse. I mean, I, I talk about this all the time. There's even pastors from their pulpit that will make an excuse for sin or say, oh, that's a gray area. You know, Jesus never directly addressed that. He never said this particular thing by name, so therefore it's okay to do. But this is what the devil does. He will sort of nudge you and say, you know, you could do It's okay. I mean, it's not a sin. It's not a sin to, you know, move in with your significant other. Just, you know, you're, you're in separate rooms. It's okay. I mean, what? You're never going to cross paths in the house. You're never going to, you know, have a moment where you're, you know, wanting to go at it. You know what I mean? Come on. Come on. Gray areas. You cannot make everything a gray area. You just can't. The goal as a believer, as a Christian, is to live your most holy life possible. Jesus said, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not going to sin. We're all going to slip up. But it's about keeping a repentant heart. Now, you can't go out there and willfully sin. If you mess up, if you slip up, you go to God, you ask forgiveness, and you try to make sure that you don't repeat that same sin again. But this isn't something that's being taught in the churches anymore. We don't hear the uncompromised word of God. We, we hear the compromised word of God. We hear the complete opposite of that. And it's a shame. But this is what the Bible told us would happen in these last days. That sound doctrine would be rejected in the favor of doctrine of demons. And the doctrine of demons is a complete counter to the uncompromised word of God. It's a, it's a deceived, you know, concession, really, if you will, that says, well, the Bible may say this, but that's not really what it means. And the younger generation is the one that's really affected most by this. And, you know, as long as I'm here, I'm going to continue to speak out uh, against this. Again, sin versus gray area. Now, I throw this out to you. You know, there's other, we, you know, I could have, I could spend an hour going over, you know, different topics and things like this that we could say is, you know, sin versus gray area. But remember, we are going to see this more and more. An increased effort to make everything a gray area. Because if you can make everything a gray area, then all bets are off. You could do whatever you want. You can live your life however you want. And basically, that will eventually divulge into lawlessness which the Bible says in the last days, the spirit of the Antichrist, which is, the Antichrist is referred to as the lawless one. So be very careful. And what you compromise to, and what you, you know, say is a gray area, because that gray area that you think that you're going into could lead to a direct path of sin and a repeated pattern of sin that you may not be able to come back from. Now, I throw it out there to you guys. Let me know your thoughts, you know, especially, you know, about the moving in with a significant other, you know, gray area or sin, plus anything else that I addressed here. Uh, or if you can think of anything else that, you know, for, for your own self too, I want to hear, you know, your own experience, you know, would you do one of these things? Is it a gray area for you? Have you done it? Did you regret you did it? Is it a sin? Is it not all of it? Let me know your thoughts. What I want to do right now, though, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything going on. I do it because we are in the last days and Jesus Christ is coming soon. Now, if you're somebody watching me right now, you know, maybe you stumbled across this channel or you got this video shared from a friend of yours, but you're somebody who has never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. This is a prayer that you can do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. 
The good news here is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of that sin. I talked about it here a little bit ago. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back into your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this down below. Again, guys, you can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. Join my Patreon family. Go to patreon.com slash conservative truth. Sign up for as little as five bucks a month. Help me with my goal for the month of April, trying to get five new patrons. We have three signups so far, looking for two more, and also trying to rebound from the month of March where we unfortunately missed that goal. You guys could also click the super thanks down below on this video here to make a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.